Hello, my name is Ines Reis. I'm from PBBR, the Portuguese firm for Use Labores. And today I'm here with my colleague James Davis, uh, to whom I'm going to ask some questions on AI. James? Uh, I'm James Davis, as Ines said. I'm one of the partners in Lewis Silkin's employment team, the UK member of Use Labores. Okay, James, I'm going to ask you some questions on AI that uh, we have prepared. Um, they are a bit long, so sorry, but I have to read them. Um, so since the launch of ChatGPT last November, the impact of AI in, on society as a whole, but for our purposes, the, the world of work, has featured prominently across the media. Do you have any thoughts about this that you want to share with us? Um, de definitely, I do. I think that... Um advances in technology that we have um, been seeing recently have had profound effects, as you say, on society and on the world of work. And I think um, AI has played its part. And now since uh, November last year, when ChatGPT was launched, the uh, potential of generative AI to disrupt is becoming more and more apparent to everybody. And I think that um, you know, in the world of work, it was... Um, sort of robotics and automation impacted greatly on the more routine, the more repetitive tasks. But I think the scary thing is that um, generative AI has the potential to impact on the knowledge jobs of my job or your job. And, um, you know, it's interesting, I was uh, hearing the Google's chief executive recently identifying accountants, um, architects and software designers at most at risk. I think this is going to have such a profound effect on so many people's work. Yeah, and it's quite quite worrying at the same time, isn't it? It is. So, if AI has the potential to disrupt knowledge jobs, what do you think the implication might be for the balance between jobs and workers? I think that's a fascinating question because today, you know, we have skill shortages. We have in many countries like the UK and I suspect in Portugal, there are too few workers for jobs. And you would think that uh, there is good reason to think that might persist. The um, demographics suggest that. We have low fertility rates in the UK and in many um, uh, of the richer nations. And uh, in past um, industrial revolutions, what tends to happen is that um, industrial transformation results in uh, increased productivity. It creates new jobs with a net, um, a net addition to the number of jobs. But I think... You know, what, 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 what troubles me is that um, generative AI, ChatGPT, and, and you know, ChatGPT is the beginning. It's going to get much stronger. It's going to get much more effective. And it's quite difficult, actually, to see jobs that aren't going to be affected by it. And I do wonder that looking a couple of decades into the future, where are all the jobs going to come from? Yeah, and, and if you were right, and if that is right, what should be done? So I think one of the problems that... Um, policymakers, governments, employers have is that there seems to be a tendency to wait for the problem to arrive before trying to do anything about it. And if, 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 if um, people like me who are concerned about the number of um, jobs there might be in the future might be right, then we need to be starting to think about that now. So you know, the, the most obvious thing that we need to be doing is equipping people with the skills for the future. Um, whether or not there are too few jobs or too few workers, you know, inevitably the skills that we need in the future are going to be very different. And there's no good waiting until we need those skills to try to have people acquire those skills. Correct. You've got to start thinking about that now. Um, I think the other thing is we need to be thinking about the possibility of a world with too few, um, too few, too few jobs. And you know, p p perhaps um, thinking about people working less. I mean. Uh, there's a lot of um, attention in the UK, I, I, I think probably in other countries, to a four-day week. And I suspect that will um, become um, uh, uh, of increased pro uh, prominence in, in, in the years ahead. Um, so, so working less um, and acquiring new skills, I think, are going to be the two big um, okay. issues. But, but the four-day four week started not because of an AI issue, but because of a work-life balance, isn't it? Well, that, well, that's right. And I think that, that that's perhaps something that needs to be embraced, a world where people have more uh, leisure time and spend less time at work. Um, you know, not like we did. Not like we did. No, I think it's changing. Okay. I think it's changing. It is. So moving to your practice, are clients seeking advice uh, on AI? Well, they're beginning to. And you know, looking at it from my practice as an employment lawyer, I mean, there's obviously other areas of law that people are, are looking at. I think that 
Um, they're coming to us now and asking us for um, advice on policies, because clearly um, yeah, we might think some of this is obvious, but yeah, issues about the fact that GP, uh, ChatGPT, uh, I, A, I get it wrong quite a lot of the time, and getting people to recognise that just because um, generative AI says something, it doesn't mean it's going to be right. Including judicial action references, which it, it, appear exactly. to be false That's true. in ChatGPT. There was a, there was a, wasn't there, there was a lot of a publicity given to uh, to some US attorneys who used ChatGP to create their legal arguments at court, and it transpired that... Uh, uh, they did not exist. No, they invented the they invented the cases, and they got into a, a professional problems. Yes, and also the fact that um, ChatGPT is an open system, so you, you you put information in there, and it gets disseminated in the outside world, and it's quite easy to put confidential information, yeah. client sensitive information in it. So rules that are regulating that are quite important. Um, the we other, need to train ourselves to to be able to, to use it properly, isn't it? And and in a secure way. I think so, but people mustn't be scared of using it because it's the future and I think we all need to get used to using it. Um, so using it but understanding its um, the, the, the controls, understanding its limitations. I think the other really interesting issue about um, uh, AI, particularly AI generated employment decisions, is bias and discrimination and um, you know, there's a lot, a lot have been written about this but um, there, are, there are lots of uh, reasons why an AI system might discriminate. It's to do with the training data, the verification data, the way the objectives are set, um, but you're then going to get legal action based on, uh, for example, a claimant saying, well, you know, I think I didn't get this job because AI discriminated against me because I'm female. And how the uh, tr employment tribunals in the UK, how the courts um, deal with those questions. They're just the, the problem. Is, employment law is ill-equipped. Discrimination law is ill-equipped to deal with those issues, and um, I think we're going to see that uh, quite soon. And there's going to be a need to think again about how we um, deal with um, the, the the issue of discrimination in, um, in AI-related decisions. Okay. Last question: Are you using AI at work or well, for work? I I I do a bit. I. Well, the thing I use is Bing, which incorporates ChatGPT, and um, I use it for, primarily for research. I don't use it for legal research because, okay. it, you know, as we said, it, it can be wrong. Um, but it's very useful in um, if I'm trying to research something uh, and I'm wanting. It's also for, for example. So, for example, um, if I'm wanting to research um, uh, into, I was looking today at something to do with mm -hmm. this. Uh, call, uh, the sources of inflation because okay. inflation has reached a uh, it's actually got nothing to do with work but okay. uh, um, it's, it's, it's uh, interest rates are reaching record highs in the UK driven by um, uh, high levels of inflation and I was sort of interested to say, you can read about it in the press but I was thinking what, what would that say it, it directed me to some sort of learned uh, articles on it which might have been a bit more difficult for me to find without okay. it and then it came up with those and adds to the Okay, so it points the way for it you to way, follow absolutely. and to at least make your research but, 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 easier. But in about five seconds. Yeah. You type a question and then you can refine the question. So okay. if it doesn't give you quite the answer you want, you, you could say, but hey, um, you know, you said this, but I really meant that. And it'll then, um, it, it'll then give you a new answer, trying to refine the uh, word. It's very clever. I encourage I'm, everybody to try it. I need to confess something. I never tried try it. GPT. Try it. It's I'm too afraid. It's very <laughs> impressive. It's very easy, but understand its limitations because it's going to be, well, not let's say chat GPT, but generative AI is going to be so important to everything we do in the future. Okay. Thank you, James. Thank you. It's Lovely been to a talk. Pleasure. Love to talk to you.